So over All-Star Weekend, Shams kind of dropped some news that the Toronto Raptors are doing their due diligence on potential first round pick from USC, Bronny James. And there's only one reason why you probably will select Bronny James, who's shooting 36% from the field and 27% from three in the first round. And that's probably because you think you're going to get LeBron James along with him. So what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? We are going to be bringing LeBron James and Bronny to the six up north. And maybe Bronny is going to be a two for one package. So I'm also going to control the Lakers for this regular season because I actually did just record this video and unfortunately it got corrupted. So LeBron retired at the end of year one. So I'm going to hope if I'm like kind of controlling the Lakers, that's not going to happen. And hey, the Toronto Raptors may be able to pull this off because they made a head scratching trade at the deadline where they sent Dennis Schroeder and Thad Young to the Brooklyn Nets. They acquired Spencer Dinwiddie in that deal and then immediately released him. And the Raptors are going to have a max spot open in free agency most likely. So maybe this was a 200 IQ galaxy brain move from Masai Ujiri to think that he could bring LeBron James and his son to Toronto. You guys can let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. If LeBron comes out and says, yeah, for my final year in the league, I want to play with my son. Whoever drafts him, I will be playing for. How high do you think Bronny would go in the first round? Because he's definitely a project player. He would benefit a ton from staying another year at USC. He is not NBA ready. He'd be more suited, like probably playing in the G League. And it could be a whole debate thing next year too, if Bronny's taking play time or at least a roster spot from somebody that deserves it a little bit more and the Raptors may honestly be a great team suited to pull this off just because they have their core foundation of Scotty Barnes RJ Baird and Emmanuel quickly they're not really going to compete next year at all you guys can also let me know in the comments if you kind of like the new face cam setup as well uh, the reason it got corrupted before I don't know I was trying to download or at least I was trying to record this on one single file I don't know I'm not gonna bore you guys with the stuff it doesn't really matter so we didn't make the playing tournament which is good we're controlling the Raptors we don't really care how far the Lakers go in LeBron though you know what they did lose in the playing tournament to the Kings that may mean he's completely done with the Lakers you have the Cavs and the Mavericks in the finals and the Mavericks win in five with Luka Doncic being your finals MVP he averaged 43 11 and 12 that is insane so LeBron does not retire good 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 because you know what when I recorded this the first time I only had one year with him all right drift lottery time two if the pick falls outside the top six we do not get it let's see where it ends up and boom we get some luck here as we land the fourth overall pick in the 2024 NBA draft. We do have another first round pick via the Pacers though. That may be where the Raptors think they can use their first round pick on Bronny at number 20. That's where I'm going to hopefully target him and he falls to me there. They did have a, the 29th pick, but they send that to the Jazz and the Kelly Olenek Oshay Obaji deal. So we are here the night of the 2024 draft. We are going to have to trade some guys to clear up some cap space for free agency. I'll probably have to move Chris Boucher, Jalen McDaniels, and Bruce Brown after I pick up his team option. So Matzis Buzelis goes number one. Reed Shepard from two and Rob uh, Dillingham goes three. Wow. Um, both players play at Kentucky. That's kind of shocking. So we're going to get a dominant big man in Alexander Saar here to either come off the bench or start for us with the fourth overall pick. That is a steal. And don't tell me Bronny has gone by pick 20. Zach Eady is gone. Come on, Miami. They're trying to steal Bronny from me. I'm not going to have it. Pat Riley is trying to do some last second tampering to get him from me. All right. Luckily, we're going to be able to trade for him. I'm going to have to take on Orlando Robinson. We're getting Bronny from the Heat for a second and pick 20. That was easy. The Heat aren't going to even have cap space to get uh LeBron as well unless he took the minimum so that is something like that the Raptors could entice LeBron as they get somebody even better Stefan Castle at 20 so like the Raptors can draft Bronny and give LeBron like the max or 30 million dollars Bron uh LeBron does not have to take a pay cut to play with the Raptors which could be kind of huge in all this so we're gonna bring back Agbaji he could get traded and Bruce Brown who's probably gonna have to get traded if we are gonna want to go out and get LeBron I'm going to give Emmanuel quickly the qualifying offer. So in order to get LeBron right now, we're going to have to clear up about $28 million. The Lakers are the only team to offer him a deal, but I think I know what to do to make sure he wants to come here. So I'm going to send Chris Boucher, Jalen McDaniels, and a second to Philadelphia. McDaniels is going to back to Philly where he was a uh, part of them for the second half of the 23 season. We're getting two future first round picks from the Sixers. And we're going to send Bruce Brown and Orlando Robinson to the Utah Jazz for their unprotected first round pick next year. Thank you very much. And Cleveland's unprotected first in 2027 maybe donovan mitchell leaves them next year so i'm gonna give lebron a three-year deal no trade cause player option on the last year and 
mm, okay. That would be kind of frustrating. All right, moratorium is done, and Braun has not accepted a deal yet. This is very frustrating. So let's just remind him that we're going to give you a nice three-year deal, player option. Come on, LeBron. This is by far your best deal. Do not take a one-year deal to play with the Pistons. Thank you very much. We're going to pick up LeBron James, and we don't have to renounce the rights on Emmanuel quickly. So let's extend him as well on a four-year deal. Come on, let's get quickly. Come on. Wow. Sixers are going to try to steal him from me, but we're going to match that. We also have a nice mid-level exception. I'm going to see if I can get uh, either Markel Fultz or Tyus Jones with it. Hmm, I think I'd rather have Fultz. So let's see, can we snag Fultz? I think so. I think we're going to get Markel. There we go, on a three-year deal. So right now, like, I think what we could look to move at the deadline is to upgrade Yaka Pertle. I think there's a center in mind that I would like to have. Uh, Braun is going to be the small forward. We'll have Scotty Barnes as the four, and RJ Bear is going to come off the bench. And I'm going to send Osha Baji to the OKC Thunder for two future first-round <laughs> picks that could have some good value to us down the line. We're also going to try to snag some G League guys like Johnny Galloway. Mirza Fisenko would be a nice two-year guy if we could pull him off. It doesn't look like it, but we get Galloway. Let's try to get George Brooks as well. Boom. There we go. So let's take a look here at player progression. LeBron does regress a little bit. There's Scotty Barnes up to an 88. RJ's in 84, Grady Dick goes up, Galloway goes down. We do not have the deepest team in the world if injuries do occur. But you know what? I think we're going to start RJ at the two. Fultz will come off the bench. So, like, we do have a lot of guards. I actually think I may start Fultz and, like, quickly. I'm going to play Bronny a ton just because, yeah, him and LeBron are going to be playing together. And Bronny actually does develop all right in this game. So, he and Grady Dick are going to get around 17 minutes a night. Alexander Saar is going to get, or Alexandra Saar is going to get 23 minutes. We'll do 24 to quickly. Let's give probably 28 to Pirtle, but I want to do 35 to LeBron and Barnes. Let's do maybe 32 to RJ Barrett, and let's do the rest to Markel Fultz. Since the proficiency is going to be three and a half star balance, let's see how we do our first game of the year with LeBron. Pirtle gets hurt. We lost by 15 to the Detroit Pistons. Great. When is our first one going to be? Are we going to beat the Dallas Mavericks on the road? No. We lost by 10. Kyrie beats us. All right. I mean, I don't have many years to win with uh, LeBron. So if I feel like I need to make a trade soon, I will. We start off the year one in four. Great. That is not what I like to see. Home game here against the Sixers. All right. Back-to-back -back wins. Alexander Saar is going to be playing through a broken nose. We are two and four to start the season. LeBron is leading the way scoring-wise, followed by RJ quickly. Scotty Barnes. Let's shoot the ball a little bit more. All right, I may have to turn this season around sooner than later because we are three and nine at the moment. Yeah, getting used to this new face cam here. Sorry. So you can see kind of the minutes on the right there if we want to make any decisions at all. I don't know like what I want to go uh, do going forward. Bronny as a rookie guard, honestly, has been pretty efficient. Like I will take those numbers 10 times out of 10 for somebody that's a rookie point guard in this league. Like I wonder what would happen here. Like what NBA team could give him like... 10, 15 minutes a night. I mean, like the Raptors could. Does I don't think Bronny has to start by any means. If he's playing like eight to 10 minutes and those eight to 10 are like somewhat with LeBron, I think he'd be cool with that. I guess like late GM, uh, GM would take over eventually. So it's like, does Masai want to deal with that? Obviously, Darko Rajakovic seems like he's the head coach for the future. But we're 11 and 10 in the moment. We are doing better than when we started, but we're still like the seventh seed. So let's try to win some games because I'm going to have to make a move sooner than later. All right, 12 and 17. I think I've seen enough. So the contracts match almost perfectly. I'm going to see what it would take to get Jared Allen from the Cleveland Cavaliers for Yaka Pirtle. So obviously, they're not going to do that straight up. I would like to not move any of the 2025 first, but I would be willing to move some of these 2026 first. So let's move this Indiana Pacers first round. I would move my unprotected first rounder next year. We got this one in the Siakam deal. So with two first round picks in Pirtle, net me Jared Allen. He does not, not even a counter offer. What about a third first round pick, including this Nuggets first rounder? No, I would be also willing to throw in a fourth first rounder. This is a lot, but I would throw in the Cavs first rounder there. That does not get it done. All right, I kind of wanted Jared Allen on this team because the dude's a beast. And he obviously has a very easy contract to trade for. All right, it wouldn't be impossible, but like DeMontis Sabonis, could I maybe get to his salary cap? It would probably cost me Markel Fultz or Emmanuel quickly. And that's that's tough to justify. Yeah, I'm going to, I think, revisit Jared Allen sooner than later. Or I try to pick up Nick Claxton. You know what? Maybe I could get Nick Claxton. I feel like this would probably be easy to pull off. They want to do RJ Barrett for Cameron Johnson. No, no, no. I don't want to give up any more players. I would throw in draft picks. So I would give you my first round pick this year. Uh, the Spurs will get our first round. Or excuse me, next year. The Spurs get our first round pick this year from the Jakob Pertle trade, funny enough. Would they do that? No. I would also 
also throw in that Denver 27 first, and that's what got it done. So yeah, we're going to throw Nick Claxton into the starting lineup. I don't think I'm going to make any other switches right now. Let's see if that maybe makes this team perform a little bit better. We're off to a good start. I mean, we beat the Cavs and we blew out the Milwaukee Bucks. All right, so we're definitely performing better with Nick Claxton. We're 20 and 18 at the moment. All right, so we are 28 and 22 at the deadline. I still really wanted uh, to get Jared Allen on this team. Uh, we don't have anybody in MVP. We do have two guys in Rookie of the Year. Like Alexander Saar would be a great trade piece for us for sure. And he's obviously like a great backup center right now. I mean, I feel like if I was like really desperate, I would look to move him. But you know what? I'm going to hope that this team can catch some momentum towards the end of the year. We're healthy right now. I'm hoping none of that changes. Like Emmanuel quickly shooting 42% from three. I mean, Fultz is not much of a three-point shooter, but he's been efficient overall. Obviously, LeBron has been fantastic. Scotty Barnes has been great as well. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to make any moves. I just need LeBron. I mean, even if he retires this year, I will override it. But let's hope that this team can maybe catch some fire towards the end of the year. And we're the three seed in the East right now, if you look at the top right. So who knows? Maybe we're able to just end up as a top three seed in the East, which I will definitely take after the start we had to the 2025 season. As Luka Doncic goes back to back and wins MVP this year, I mean, averaging a 33-point triple-double will do just that. Uh, we get the rookie of the year, Alexander Saar, who averaged one and a half blocks. It would be 2.3 per 36. James Harden decided to go to the Motor City, signed with the Pistons, is your sixth man of the year. Wemby takes home Depoy. Zion, most improved. Okay, I'm here for it. That is pretty cool. And Tatum is your clutch player of the year. Jason Kidd, coach of the year. We did get LeBron James on all NBA third team as a 22 year old. And then we got Alexander Saar and Bronny James on all rookie first team. We ended the season as the fifth seed though. I mean, it could have been a little bit better. <laughs> We're lucky to take on Boston in round one, which is kind of scary. I do not want to face this team. Oh man, we're I mean, LeBron has owned the Celtics pretty much since he went to the Miami Heat, so maybe he can own them one last time. If we look at the stats here in the Eastern Conference for points per game, uh we sat at pretty much the fifth best team. For defense, we were also the fifth best team, so I guess it makes sense that we are the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference. Uh Marco Fultz is dealing with an injury. I don't know if I want to start him for the playoffs just because he's pretty inefficient. I may start Emmanuel quickly. I mean, Bronny shot 33 from 34 and a half assists. I may start him and just say, screw it. So to construct this rotation right here, do I want to start quickly? I don't know who I want to start. That's the problem. All right, you know what? I think Grady Dick's going to get like 10 minutes tonight. Uh, we're going to go 25 to Sar. Let's go 33 to Claxton. Let's go 21 to Bronny. I'm, I'm going to play quickly like 26. Let's go 36 to LeBron, or we'll do 36 to LeBron, 36 to Barnes. Round one here against the Boston Celtics, we ended up losing by three points. LeBron with 31, 6, and 9. Scotty with 26. Okay, don't lose game number two, please. There we go. There we go. Huge win there by 16, as LeBron had a 25-point triple-double. Game number three, please win this one. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. We won by six. LeBron with a 16-point triple-double. Scotty with 29 points. Bronny with 17 and 7 off the bench. Game four, boom. We're up three to one. Let's go. We won 116-112. Are we going to pull off the upset and beat the four-seeded Celtics? Claxton's got an injury. We just won in five. Let's go. LeBron owns the Celtics one last time. Quickly with 27 and 7 in game five. LeBron with 25. Hell yeah. Scotty Barnes led the team in scoring, followed by LeBron. Quickly, there's RJ and Markel Fultz. You had the seven seeded Cavs upset the two seeded Hawks. You had the Pacers just barely beat the Hornets. Oh, that would have been amazing if we had Charlotte in round two. All right, game number one against Indiana. Did they add anybody? They have Halliburton, Nemhart at the two, Matherin, Miles Bridges, Miles Turner. Are we able to beat this team? I feel like we can beat them. Aaron Neesmith is hurt. Game one, though, goes to them. They beat us by 22 points. All right. I mean, not the greatest game for Scotty Barnes. LeBron only took 12 shots. We go down 2-0. Oh, we got blown out in the first two. That's not very fun. Scotty with 23, 11, and 8. Three blocks. Barrett with 31 and 5. Two rebounds for Nick Claxton as he shot 0 for 10. Really? You're, you're a big man. Why, why is that happening? You're not even taking any outside shots either. We stay alive. We win game three. Bronny had 23 points in 21 minutes. To be honest with you, I think I'm going to insert him into the starting lineup. So quickly, he's going to get 20 minutes. Fultz is going to get 20 minutes. We're going to go 28 to Bronny, who's on fire right now. Can we stay alive and win game four? Yes, we can. We won by nine. Hell yeah. Scotty Barnes with 31 points. LeBron with 18 and 11. 17 rebounds for Claxton. Bronny at 11-6. Wow, 11, 7, 6, and 3 in his first start. Game 5, please. Let's go! We just won by 9. All right, all right. LeBron fouled out. Thank God, I thought he got hurt. That would have sucked. I don't think anybody really got hurt on their team. They moved Miles Bridges to the bench, like, in this series. Oh, 
Stand corrected. Jalen Smith got hurt. Maybe that was a missing piece for them as we ended up winning in six. We held them to 12 points in the fourth quarter. Hell yeah, man. LeBron with 33, 10, and 7. Scotty Barnes with 24 and 10. RJ had 19. And we're going to be taking on the Philadelphia 76ers in the conference finals. A rematch from 2019 second round. But this team, oh my god, we're getting so lucky. This is a Mickey Mouse championship run. Joel Embiid is injured. Okay, he's day-to-day -day though. So he may even play game one. We had three 20-point per game scorers there. Can we beat Philadelphia? Game number one goes to Toronto by two points. Kevin Porter Jr. 27. Embiid is back. He played 32 minutes. Scotty Barnes at 30 and 10. Game number two. Quickly is going to be hurt. He should be back soon, though. Can we win game number two without Quickly? Yes, we can. We end up beating them by 29. Let's go. LeBron 32, 6, and 8. Scotty at 27. Barrett at 21. 12 assists for Fultz in 20 minutes. 12 and 12 and 20 minutes. That's insane. Game three goes to Toronto. Scotty Barnes with 38. Barrett with 27. LeBron with 25 and 8. Barrett has been incredible. And are we going to sweep Philadelphia to advance to the NBA Finals? Clarkson's fully healthy. Yes, we do. Wow. It wasn't even a fight from them. Grady Dick at 14 points in 19 minutes. LeBron had 12, 7, and 10. RJ had 29. Maxi had 43. Did not matter. Are we taking on the Thunder or the Mavericks in the finals? It's going to be the OKC Thunder. Scotty versus Shea. And here we are. OKC versus Toronto. Did they add anybody? They've added Andre Drummond to their bench. You know what? I'm not that nervous. They drafted Tijon Salon. They do have Oshea Ogbaje. I feel like we could beat them. Game one goes to the thunder all right i don't want to get too cocky they ended up beating us by nine scotty had 31 7 and 8 lebron 21 6 and 6 he had two blocks as well oh man damn it damn it damn it rj barrett out for the year is quickly ever gonna come back i guess he may be healthy right now yeah he is back let's see what happens here we do win game two quickly has been inserted into the starting lineup he had 22 points welcome back iq can we win without, without RJ Barrett? I mean, LeBron and Scotty combined for 66. Game three, we ended up losing this one by five. Oh my God, we sucked in the fourth quarter. We scored 15 points. Must win game four. No, we're down. Oh my God, we lost by three. Really? Game three, lose by five. Game four, lose by three. Are we going to lose in five? Nope, we stay alive. We blow them out. Oh my god. All right, here we go. Game six. All we had to do was win one of game four or game five, and we would have been fine. But we got to win game six on the road. Anything could happen in game seven. We have a fantastic first half. You're choking it in the third. You're choking it. Oh my god, please win this game. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're up by one with 20 seconds left. We got to play some defense here. We got to play some defense. I am so nervous. Oh god, Fultz is guarding Shea. Okay, Sar, you could play down. Drummond's in the corner there. Do not worry about Andre Drummond. Please worry about anybody else but Andre Drummond. All right, eight seconds. Sar, get over. Get over. Sar, stay over. He gets the block. Yes, yes. What a block by Alexander Sar with 3.7 seconds left. They're going to call a timeout. All right, you guys always hate on me in the comments that I'm not good at 2K, and that may be true, but can I get some props for that, please? All right, 3.7 seconds here. Don't make me lose the finals on this. This would be utter heartbreak. Okay, just make sure it doesn't go to Shea. Just make sure it doesn't go to Shea. They're trying to go to J-Dub. Oh no, Claxton. Oh my God, let's go. I thought I jumped early. That may have been the luckiest stop ever, but we're advancing to game seven of the NBA finals. That's why we traded Yaka Pertle for Nick Claxton. Oh my God. God. I think I blacked out there. I didn't even know who was on the floor. That 3.7 seconds felt like an eternity as well. What a game from LeBron. He had 19, 13, and 15, and Scotty Barnes had 32. All right, are we going to come back down 3-1? to one? All right, here goes nothing. Game 7, 2025 NBA Finals. Oh, don't get blown out. Don't get blown out, 2K. You teased me. You made me think we could win this. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. All right, not off to a great start. We're down by... Oh, my God. Okay. We got outscored by 12 in the first. Oh my God, okay. See, it's just like that. We can come back. We're up by five. LeBron is in full game seven mode. He's got zero fouls. We don't have to worry about that. Shea's got two. Let's get him in foul trouble, please. All right, I will take just being close right now because I thought we were going to get blown out after that first quarter. We're down by one. They definitely have some momentum. We're up by four, up by two. Oh my God, it's going to be a close one, isn't it? All right, up by three, up by one, up by two with a minute to go. What is going on? We're up by four. Let's hop in. Let's hope to finish this off and win in our first year with Bronny and LeBron. It would be a storybook ending. We also have the ball as well, which is pretty sweet. So we can waste, honestly, another 24 seconds. Chet is guarding LeBron. who has got 34, 14, and 8. He would maybe be the GOAT. Winning with your son in the NBA 
and dropping 34, 14, and 8. They're sending the double. Kick that over to quickly. Sar inside. Oh, they fouled. I was going to try to find Claxon inside. That was honestly a good foul by Drummond. Oh, God. Alexander Sar, the rookie. Oh, man, he misses that. That's not great. <laughs> he misses the first one. Please don't go over two. I would cry. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? What a foul by Andre Drummond. I guess that was just the smartest play of all time. And quickly, he's going to score. Or Shea scores so quickly. Oh, this is not good at all. All right, get the ball quickly. He's a good free throw shooter. All right, can we... Uh, I kind of want to call timeout, but I only got one more. Quickly, he's open for three. Quickly, please hit this. Please hit this. That would be so big. Okay, Sar with the nice rebound. Kick that out to Scotty Barnes. Why did I shoot that? I could have wasted another 11 seconds. It doesn't matter. Puts us up by five. Scotty's got ice in his veins. Oh my God, what a shot. I can't believe quickly missed that. But shout out to Alexander Sar who got the rebound. Now we got Claxton in. Just no threes. No threes. Um, they can get a two if they want. We can take our free throws. J-Dub is going to hit that jumper. Let's get the ball to quickly. Who definitely is the best free throw shooter on the floor for us. All I need for him is to hit one they don't have any timeouts first free throw from quickly is good he's got 11 and it looks like we're gonna come back down 3-1 in the finals which is also gonna be legendary for lebron without rj barrett as well who's probably like our third or fourth best player okay josh giddy you want to take the three no chance and ellie hits that uh kick that up too quickly oh my god he got fouled and Bronny, one year in the nba one ring that's never been done before I'm just kidding. I know Christian Brown did it last year, and I'm sure plenty of players have done, like, won a championship in their rookie seasons. As we're going to come back down 3-1. to one. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. And finals MVP is LeBron James. That is kind of insane, man. 27 points, 9.5 rebounds, 9.5 assists, basically. 1.1 steals, 58-50-86 splits. LeBron toe, man. It happened. And that is a storybook ending for LeBron James. He went out on top, winning his fifth NBA championship when his son entered the league. I mean, that would just be mind-blowing if that happened. So I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Feel free to drop a thumbs up if you did. And yeah, please let me know in the comments if you guys like that face cam or not. Did it seem weird? I kind of liked it, but you guys can let me know what you think as a viewer watching the videos. Also, if you didn't know, I brought back the Just Ball and Podcast. You may have been a listener to it back before. It was pretty much in the pandemic is when it ended. We got kind of 30 episodes in and then, you know, I, I didn't do it for a couple years, but I brought it back at the old RSS feed. So you may even see it if you were following on your spot Spotify or Apple Podcasts following. We're pretty much four episodes in, and I'm going to hopefully be bringing out two to three a week. I also have a whole dedicated YouTube channel. Link to that is in the description. If you want to go, just subscribe to that. You can kind of watch the video formats of everything. I have a pretty cool setup over there as well. And then obviously there's the Apple Podcasts or Spotify links in the description. If you were not following over there, I would have really appreciate it. If you went over, maybe dropped a rating or review. It would mean a lot to me. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Drop a thumbs up if you did. This would be really cool. And let me know in the comments, would you want to see LeBron play with the sun? and what team would make the most sense and would be the coolest for this to happen. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. I love you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.